All right, welcome back eighth graders. So we are switching just a little bit. We're still talking about functions, but now we're talking about defining functions, different ways to define a function, how to rearrange an equation um, so that you can determine what the independent variable is. That's gonna be this week. So this week I'm only doing two videos, but they probably will be about 10 to 15 minutes um, each. So um, just hang in there. You're eighth grade, you're almost ninth graders. Um, your classes are what, an hour and a half for um, high school? So 15, 20 minutes, you can give me 15, 20 minutes per video. Okay, so <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and get started. Let me take that off because that flew across the room last time I used it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you an equation um, and we want M to be our independent variable. So I have 8M plus four equals 8N minus four. Now, let's see, wait a minute. You do not have the same variable. No, I do not. We are not looking at combining our variables and then combining our constants. That's not what this is. This is when we are rearranging the equation so that we can isolate the independent variable. We want to find out what is our independent variable. We want that one to be the one that stands out. What is that going to look like? So when it's asking you for this variable here, what you're gonna do is you're going to look at the variable it is not asking you for and solve for that one. So it's asking me to rearrange the equation so that M is the independent variable, which means I need to solve for N. I need to solve for N in order, so in order to make M my independent variable. So let's get started. So actually, here we go. We'll solve for n. Let me see if I have like a one of my markers that isn't as. Here we go. I got the same one. It's a little bit thick. So we are going to solve for n. Okay. Solving for n. So. I'm going, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. I'm going to add four to both sides. I'm like a frog in my throat. <coughs> Bring down what I did not use. Okay. So the only thing I can do here is I can divide, I need to divide everything by the number eight. Why? Why did I say I need to divide everything by the number eight? Because we're solving for N. What number is keeping N from being by itself without a co, excuse me, without a coefficient? The number eight. I did not choose the number eight because they all have an eight. I want you to see that. I did not choose the number eight because each one of them has an eight. I chose the number eight because I am solving for N. And when I solve for N, N has to be by itself. Just disclaimer, I just wanna put that out there because on the other two examples, that's not how it's gonna be. So divide everything by eight. One, one, and one. So what I end up with is I end up with M plus one equals N. So I solved for N. Now, when you see it this way, you can switch it. N equals M plus one. They mean the exact same thing. They mean the exact same thing. All I did was I just switched it around. You can leave it like that or you can switch it around. It might be easier if you switch it around because that's just how you're used to seeing it. 
So now that we solved for n, we know that n equals m plus 1. We don't need to go anywhere else. There's nowhere else we can go. There's nowhere else we can go. So now m is my independent variable. This thing does not depend on this or this. This will always be the same. Okay? Hopefully that makes sense before we get into the second one. Take a picture if you need to. All right, so for the next one, I'm just going to erase these and we're gonna do the next one. So instead of solving for M, now I'm solving for A. So I have 13A plus 14 equals 9B minus 4. Okay? So the same thing that I did on the other one, I'm going to do the exact same thing again. I'm still going to add my constants so that I can get them all on one side. Or I'm doing my inverse because sometimes if this was um, if this was the addition symbol, then you would be subtracting from both sides. But it's not. So th there you go. Okay. Nine B. So if I am solving for A, <laughs> my fault, y'all. No one caught my mistake because no one's here to catch it. So as I said before, when they ask you to rearrange it, to find this as my independent variable, you're solving for the other variable. So that was my mistake. Hopefully I didn't confuse you too bad on that one. But instead of solving for, you're not solving for what you're looking for, you're solving for the other one. So that was my fault. I caught it when I saw it like, wait a minute, I'm not divided by 13. That'd be crazy. So to get rid of the coefficient, I'm going to divide everything by nine. I'm like really just getting all kind of wrong stuff up here. It happens, right? So that actually just cancels out. So we'll just put that there. 13a divided by nine is just 13 over 9a. 18 over 9, or 18 divided by 9, gives you 2. So if you want to rewrite it so that it makes more sense to you, then all you do is switch sides. Okay? So we had to rearrange it to get A as our independent variable. Now A is with the independent variable. We know what that is. This is what you would write. I'll leave it there for a second. Let me take a picture. Okay. So now we're going to have C as our independent variable. My, sorry if you heard that, my printer decided it wanted to wake up for a second for no reason at all. All right, so here is the problem. Negative four, I have to write a little higher because I feel like it's like crazy low or something. Negative four C plus eight F equals C plus 10 F. Okay, so we have C, right? Which means we need to solve for F. Solve for F. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get F on the side by itself, okay? So how about we take, let's get, 
this over here. We'll do 4C. So I'm going to add 4C to both sides. And I bring down 8F equals how many C's? And now I have a total of 5 C's plus 10F. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to get it over here, right? Take this and put it over here. So I'm going to subtract 10F from both sides. This gives me a negative 2F equals 5C. Remember, we are solving for F. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. And my final answer is F equals 5 halves negative C. So let me kind of make that a little. Okay. I know that seems a little complicated because it's like, well, uh, we didn't have a constant. That's okay. The steps are still the same. The steps are still the same. I'm still getting rid of my coefficient. I'm still getting everything that's the same on one side of the equal sign and everything that's different on the other side of the equal sign. So we solved for F. F equals negative 5 half C. If you have any questions about this, please reach out to me. Please ask questions, guys. Don't just like, please ask questions. There's so many, so many, so many times I went over the work you guys are doing and I see that I'm not being asked questions, but the answers are coming out wrong. If you don't want to ask me a question, that's fine. At least request the hint. Look at the hint. Click the hint button. Go back and look at some of the videos. Go back and look at this video. You have... Um, options in front of you and if you do not get a 60 or better then i can't give you the grade you're gonna have to get an incomplete and i don't want to do that so keep trying you know in class my my philosophy in class is you got to keep trying until you get a 70. so ask questions look at the videos go back over this video look at the videos that are already in khan academy do some more of the practice problems um, that are outside of um, the, the work that I'm giving you. Just try, okay? And I'll see you in the next one.